Hey guys, well there you are back for more Portrait of Ruin, and now that we've gotten the worst ending out of the way, let's try to get a better one now. So what I was just doing is to have some equipment set up kind of like this. The reason why I have Vampire Killer is not for the reason that I need its attack power for damaging, I need its attack power for not damaging. <clears throat> basically, there's a reason why you're going to have to use a weak weapon here. It's basically... There's only one attack that uh, still or Loretta uses that you need to hit her out of it, and it takes five good hits. So if you have like a strong weapon, that could run the risk of you c accidentally killing her when you don't want it to, because this battle can be quite annoying as hell. Basically, what you need to do here is you're going to have to have uh, Charlotte use this spell, the Sanctuary spell, the Purification spell. Otherwise, you're going to have this problem where you're never going to get the best ending in the game, mainly, because you're going to have to do wonderful things of killing, you can't kill them, obviously, otherwise you get that shitty ending, so this is the only way. And the problem with, uh, the problem with Sanctuary is this. My fucking god's going to take forever to, to use, so that's the problem behind this spell, it's one of the slowest charging spells in the game, so you kind of have to deal with that. The way to deal with that is you can use Taunt to maybe hopefully lure the enemies away from Charlotte, but it's kind of a hard thing considering that Loretta loves using these room, uh, room cleaning spells of hers, so you gotta really watch out for this bat in this battle. And try not to complain about getting hit because it's gonna take some serious, it's gonna take some serious tries, I would have to say. Yes, and then we had the little cutscene, so I'm just going to skip that wonderful cutscene. I'm going to head to this side of the room and hope to God they use a good spell. Oh, oh here we go. Alright, try to lure them away. Fuck. Come on. Here we go. Hell yeah. Well, that was very lucky. Yeah, you definitely have to watch out there, because I barely won that fight with my life. I was just hoping they do that spell right off the bat. Usually taunting at the beginning provokes them in doing that for some reason. Is that it? The spell was perfect. Now let's see if it was effective. Well, they're kind of getting sparkling lights around them, and their skin color is looking normal. Uh-oh, they might be back to normal. I... Loretta, are you alright? Uh-oh. Looks like they're back to normal. Thank God. Now I don't have to fucking have two sis ladies going after Jonathan's life. It's the Stella. The vampire control seems to be fa fading a success. Yeah, good job, you two. God. Well, of course. No problem, as you would say. <clears throat> what have we been doing? I... We can't tell you. It's been... Yeah. Alright, so it looks like the two sisters are back to normal. The heir of the vampire killer, Jonathan Moore, is correct. Oh, wow, she knows everything about Jonathan. I apologize for all we've put you through. Well, at least you're back to your senses. Huh? Oh, sure. No, no problem. <clears throat> Miss Charlotte, thank you so much for setting us free. Sure thing, the curse may be lifted, but you still should take it easy. <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Laura, I think we should stand up. Still, are you alright after what we've been, been through? I know, but there's a job that we still must... We must do now. What's that? But... <clears throat> remember your dignity! We have time to mourn when... What happened when it's all over. Oh, crap. Serious back talk there. Well, at least they're back to normal. That's a good thing. I'm sorry you had to see that. Once more, our family shares the fate of the Moores family. We are the cards, after all. I am Stella, and this is my youngest sister, Loretta. <clears throat> and we are... Uh-oh. We already know. Anyways, we must hurry. Must be defeat Bronner. The peace he's making it now is meant to destroy the world. What the hell? Okay. And even Jonathan's a little surprised. <clears throat> so basically, they're going to explain the true purpose that we have, guys. <clears throat> we s he said it's almost... It was almost complete. It's in the st It's in the studio painting. It's in the studio painting? Really? Oh, I guess they, they, he's in the studio painting. Okay. Where's that studio? Where's the studio painting? It's in the inner room. But even for us, entering the picture is impossible. There's one option, however. What is it? 
This studio painting is sealed by four paintings around it. And there you go, guys. There's the four areas that you have to go through before going to the final battle. <coughs> Meaning we need to break the seal and enter the painting. I cease. You will help us, right? Well, it's no use. I'm amazed they can even talk like this after being under such a powerful curse. Yeah, they can't move. That's true, but that's not all. <coughs> the door to the inner room can be opened by the magic of either Bronner's, Bronner or ourselves. So you'll stay here and open a door for us? Sure, no problem. <coughs> One more thing, it's about the vampire killer. We can perform a ritual to unlock the power of the whip. Unfortunately, what? I know, I know, using it will consume us all right. Please don't forget that. You must use it wisely. Luckily, guys, there is. N it might. You might be worried that using the whip will drain your life. It doesn't do that. Thank God. It's not like Soul, the Soul Edge and Soul Caliber. <clears throat> but uh, just note that unlocking the whip is probably the best thing to do before you get into the final stages of a game. It does make it incredibly easy, <clears throat> for one thing. And the other thing is, is that it's. It's, I mean, it's the fucking vampire killer, and you get to fight an awesome boss with awesome music if it's around the whole fight. So, yeah, I'd definitely do it. <clears throat> if you're prepared, then just tell us. Lucy, about your father. Know that. Once this is all over, then you can tell us about him. Okay. <clears throat> Uh-oh. And my throat is starting to kick up again, so hold on just a moment. Alright, that should hopefully work. And looks like they're still mourning. Shit. Loretta! Yes, let them do. Let them. No time for mourning. You gotta give us some ultimate pop power here, damn it. Right, no problem. Okay, so this is what happens. They help out with this. And I guess you could possibly talk to them after leaving. And then we have this horrible, horrible looking place. And right now we only have access to two of the paintings two of the paintings. So basically you have the Dark Academy here, you have, I don't know what the hell this is called, you have 13th Street here, and then you have, hmm, I forget what the hell this is called too, shit, I don't remember half these things, wait, or half the name of these places, and this is obviously studio painting with four chains all over it, looking pretty gruesome to be honest. So yeah, I'm gonna go into this painting first, but before I do that, we can talk with the girls. <laughs> and they can offer us this option. Are you prepared to unlock the power of the vampire killer? Wait, not yet. When you're ready, you can ask us at any time. Because this boss here, and the fact that I have like 8 HP, this next boss coming, or the, the vampire killer unlockage is like one of the hard things to do in this game, I will admit. Because you have to fight... A certain boss that can annihilate the shit out of you if you are not prepared. But he's not a truly, it's not like a stupidly hard boss, but it's just something that's going to take some focus for a, a long amount of time. But yeah, you have two paintings to enter into, and I suggest starting with the Dark Academy, even though this painting has quite a bit of difficulty attached to it. But uh, you do get a very useful, uh, very useful relic here, which you'll probably be making a lot of use out of in the future. So yeah, that thing you, you pretty much should go to first so you can get that ability. But uh, hold on just a moment real quick so I can get make sure this throat doesn't act up again. Food. That's what I'm talking about. Alright guys, and we're back. So we're gonna head into the Dark Academy, and this place kinda sucks. But yeah, basically, this the interesting thing about these new these four areas I should mention to you all. Basically, the these levels are rehashes of the areas you already been to. And if you can't, let's see if you guys can possibly guess what this area might be rehashing. <clears throat> so far, we have rainy effects, which is kind of cool. That's definitely something new to note about. And let's see, I'm gonna give you something Tempest related, because that spell kicks ass. And maybe Tone's arm too, girl. <clears throat> Alright, so we're gonna head into the Dark Academy. And this place is kinda tricky, because it does have some pretty nasty monsters here and there. And we're already, and you probably might be able to really guess what this, damn, you wanna stay
stay away from those guys. Those guys kind of, like, go freaking suicidal on you. <laughs> this enemy here is kind of annoying as hell, but unfortunately he has a pretty set pattern that he's pretty stuck to. He has to walk. He has to run back and forth in a certain spot. <laughs> Come on, buddy. But the areas, but the least one thing about these rehashed areas is that the, uh, they do have different themes, thank god. They're similar, but not that similar. Come here. Punk. <laughs> Crap. And we have toads now. They're a little bit more aggressive than frogs, because they can hop a lot higher and a lot further, but... And they probably do a little bit more damage, too, but... At least they're not a pain in the ass to deal with once you get a couple stabs in. And what the hell? Okay. I'll just kill you real quick. And holy crap. So yeah, this lady's kind of nasty to deal with. But uh just want to stay away from her. Not try to get too close so she don't stab you with her little brute attack. I guess that's a good thing to call it. <laughs> crap. So she is quite dangerous, I'll admit. Shit. Of course, we have flea men having to dance around here. What the heck? Damn you! Stop being an ass with your damn attacks and let me by. There. So yeah, she can be quite annoying, but luckily, once you learn her little patterns and maybe how great this damn tree, no wonder there's so many of them. What it's just doing is to kill this damn thing as quickly as you can. Definitely annoying enemy here. I think this thing will constantly freaking spawn flea men over and over again until you knock all the bud or knock up the buds off the tree. So that's why there are so many of those damn guys on here. Damn, and by so many I mean an endless of fucking gray or parade of them. God, I would hate this tree in real life. Fuck off, flea tree. Break all your damn branches. Get away. So yeah, the Quite a few enemy, quite a few nasty enemies here. We have these enemies, which are kind of annoying. Please get rid of them quick, which you very well can, since they only take a hit. <clears throat> but they do have annoying attacks, and they do t do a good amount of damage. And here's a nice save point to definitely make use of. Not forbid. But yeah, once you get associated with this area, as you can see, it is definitely a uh, rehash of Force of Doom. Well, it does have some pretty good music, and we have this guy. This guy's annoying to fight, because he has all these wonderful, wonderfully hard to, to dodge attacks, like the freaking fireball arcing, and holy shit, that guy just burned himself to death. Probably should've been playing around with fire, dick. Alright, so I kicked that guy's ass, and we also have black crows, and she's just killing them quick. Sometimes they'll lovely just sit on their ass and let you kill them. Sometimes it can give you a problem. <laughs> but a uh, nice thing about these rehashed areas, they're not exactly the same as the older areas that you've been to. Shit. This guy's a pain in the ass. I suggest you try to find a way under him. Try not to get hit by him, because he is quite a dangerous enemy. Fucking black crows that I cannot see the shit. Uh, or I cannot see at all here. Gold plate. Alright, this might be the better armor for what I have right now. Let's see. Hell yeah. Seven defensive boosts there. Nice. Fuck off, crow. Damn it. Yeah, you know what? Get your ass back here. Ugh. Hey, crows. I think they'd be such a pain in the ass in this game, but they're officially worse than bats. No qu what the hell is this? Owlmorph, a shape-shifting spell that will turn the caster into an owl, and this will be very important for reaching everything else in this game, guys. <laughs> the owl spell, and basically what we'll be getting later on, pretty, or getting pretty soon, I hate this guy, freaking attack. This guy's pretty much kind of like that uh, dog-like enemy, in a way, where it just kind of sat there, blew breath, jumped back and forth, that sort of thing. What you want to keep an eye out for is you want to keep an eye out for a weak ceiling in this area. It might be a good idea to maybe uh, try to use a, a, an arching blade to hit the ceiling. But yeah, you, you, there are a couple uh, nice dual crush abilities in this area, and I would suggest getting them because they're really good and 
really effective against a lot of enemies. You'll see what I mean. Mm -hmm. Alright, but I'm going to equip Jonathan with some better stuff for one thing, because he is taking some serious damage here. So you put on that silk hat, yeah. And I think we'll stop here, guys. So next time, we're going to use the Owl Morph spell and show that off. So thanks for watching. Have a great day, and adios.